You're listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life, hosted by Travcon. Welcome to the Travel Nursing and Allied podcast. This is the Traveler episode this week, and with me is Jessica Nade. Jessica is a cath lab nurse who has done a variety of different types of cath labs that we're going to talk about. Also, later on, we're going to talk about her adorable border collie, Dixie Jane, medical missions, and gold-plated stents. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. So you tr- also travel with a dog, is that right? Um, so I've had her for nine years. My dog, Dixie, she is a border collie and she's traveled everywhere with me. And it's been really great as a nurse, travel nurse, because, you know, on your days off, you want to just veg out. And it's great having her with me because she gets me out and about and um, to explore the areas that I go to and get outside which I need, you know, I don't want to just sit in my apartment where I don't know anyone and you don't have to know anyone when you have a dog, like (laughs) she makes her own. So it's been great. That's amazing. How hard do you find it to find housing with a border collie? It does make it more challenging. It, uh, if you take the agency housing, they typically put you in a hotel would work, but I prefer to have a little more control over the situation, you know, know the landscape that I'm going to be in. I prefer to find my own housing. Uh, I use furnished finders a lot of the time because they are pretty friendly with pets. And since she's traveled her whole life, it's I haven't really had a lot of issues. It just makes it, that's really the only issue I have with traveling is finding housing. Once I find that, I'm good to go. It's so much easier now using uh, for either Furnish Finder, Airbnb, nurses at b and there's, there's a few out there now. And then you can set the filters yeah. for accepting pets and being in a certain location. So that's actually really nice to have those filters and narrow it down. Yeah, I have had to stay in hotels, which, you know, you make it work. Um, but I found using a lot of those other websites, Airbnb, VRBO, and I've, I've always made it work. I've had some close calls where I'm like a week out and I still haven't found anything. And I'm like, I don't want to do the hotel, but it's always worked out for luckily, you know, right now we're in this, we're in an old schoolhouse here. I'm in Pennsylvania. It was built in the 1800s. They made it into little studio apartments. I've just, I've had these really great experiences. I mean, I've just been really grateful for the opportunities I've had even traveling with a dog. It, it could make it work. How's your bladder for 12 or how's the dog Dixie Jane's <laughs> bladder for 12 hour shifts? So before I was a nurse, I worked on the ambulance. And so her whole life has been, you know, I'm gone for a long time and then crazy for the 12 hours before I go back. So she's used to this schedule. So she just veges out and sleeps. I have like a dog eater so I can watch her, but I've been utilizing like Rover, which is an app where you can hire dog walkers. So on days when I'm on call, I know I'm probably not coming home after like eight, 10 hours. I'll hire someone to come and take her for a walk during the day. And, you know, I'm getting college kids 20 bucks a day or something like that, which I don't have kids. My childcare is having someone walk my dog. So that's my expense there. But yeah, I do for her. And as a cath lab nurse, my shifts are typically eight or 10 hours. So they're not necessarily 12, 14, 16 hours like they were on the ambulance. So she's not necessarily being inside that quite that long. And the Rover service, do you find that in most Mm -hmm. cities? Yeah, most cities do have people working on it. So I've worked in moderate-sized towns, like I was in Springfield, Oregon before this, and they had quite a lot of people on it. And I've been able to use that, or I've just gone Craigslist, Facebook, buy, sell, trade, and just been like, hey, anybody want to come walk my dog, run some references. And I've been able to find people or like my Lord will know someone as well from wherever I'm renting from. And I've been able to find someone to come and walk her during the day. That is so cool. Can you tell the listeners what the website is for Rover? Uh, Yeah. So Rover is an app um, I found just through the app store. Um, but you make a profile, you are, you post like a profile of your dog and then you look for services that you're looking for. They also do dog sitting. So I went out of town for a weekend and they'll watch your dog in 
your own home or in their home. So instead of going to a boarding facility, um, you can do a visit in the person's home. So you see the environment the dog will be in. They'll send you pictures while you're gone. And it just gives me a lot of peace of mind because I don't know anyone in the towns I'm in. Who that have- is so cool. So it's an app more so, not a website because you're going in and creating. Yeah. You probably could do it off your computer too. We'll put the website yeah. in the notes there. And also I've, in between contracts, have been a, I don't know, a worker or made my own pro bond. I've gone and just administered people's meds to their pets because they just don't want to do that. Like in right. Lynn or right. Hills and walked other people's dogs. So I've like worked on the app too, just because I like pets. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to do it to their own pet Yeah, too. They don't want to see their own pet like that or so the, any other pet is fine, but their own is a little bit different. Just like parents and kids, you know, you, you have somebody yeah. else give the medication and then you're the good person. You're not the bad person. Yes. So she goes everywhere with me and, um, she is here with me right now. I just dropped her off with my parents. So I'm originally from St. Louis, but I haven't lived there cause I've been traveling. Um, but she, my dog is Dixie, is with my parents because I'm going out of town tomorrow for a my first surgical mission trip to the Dominican Republic. So I'm really excited to do that. And she's a border collie. She's not a super small dog. Do you find it easy enough to get around with her? Yeah, she loves the car. Um, she has flown with me before. So really? I was in California. Yeah, I was in California for work, for travel contract. And then I had like a month. So I flew back to St. Louis with her and then flew back to California for working. So she gets around pretty easily and she weighs about 40 pounds. So she's kind of in between that small medium range. So, um, you know, luckily she's in lots of rentals. I've never had a problem. So she has great references and even places that don't allow pets. I'm like, Hey, I'm a travel nurse. She has great and they'll even let her in places that don't allow pets. So nice. I would tell most travelers, like, don't be afraid, even if it says no pets, so just ask. I mean, the worst is they're going to say no. Yeah. And then you're right back where you were before. But I mean, they could say yes. That's a really cool thing is to actually have references for your pet. Uh, that's a yeah. really interesting thing I never thought about. Uh, yeah, they'll ask, like, what's your last landlord? call to ask, you know, how was the pet? Did they have any damages? Did they get their deposit back? They've asked for that for my dog. It's so wow. We, so yeah, she's with her Oman Opa, my parents, her grandparents. Yeah. So I'm going on this trip and it's actually through a collaboration of some travel groups like uh, MedVenture and a uh, travel nurse takeover. And so it's like medical professionals and volunteers put together this group going to the Dominican Republic. Cause I, I've never left the country. I've never done any kind of mission work. And I wanted to do both of those things. I'd booked a lot of trips. They all got canceled because of COVID. And so I started travel nursing, following all these pages, all of these individuals related to travel nursing. And now it's like, I get to meet these people that I've been learning from and uh, communicating with over the last few years, get to, help the community, but also explore the world too. So I'm really looking forward to doing that tomorrow. We actually interviewed um, someone about a year ago and she does a lot of missions. So you can check back on the Traveler Minute and uh, talk with somebody about who she's done a lot of different missions. She's done ones uh, in various countries and Dominican Republic was one of them. And she just loves the experience of it. And one of our keynote speakers also helps run uh, a company that does that in various countries. It also coincided with like the end of this contract. I've been just like, get through this contract and then pack really quick and then go on this mission. And then I'm like, going to, I'm going to Portugal, like the same day I get back from the Dominican Republic. So I just like have a cram packed few weeks. We just got back from Portugal last month. Wow. So we spent three weeks there and it's a fantastic country to be in. It's 90% vaccinated. So you can really relax, but everyone still goes about their day wearing a mask indoors. Uh, But when food and drink is served, they're just full on party, but it's such a great country (laughs) 
to travel through. And of course, anywhere but Canada, pretty much you can get around with an antigen test. And then I did actually a two-part podcast on the Portugal trip. And a little bit of what was required to get over there with the testing. And there's a couple of uh, forms that you need to fill out. And otherwise, the planes are empty. It's a great time to travel and get around. And now with Omicron coming in, there might be a little bit more hesitation even further. So it'll be a great country yeah, to I'm enjoy. Like, I just need to get out there and get back really quick before things get really out of hand with the holidays and the new variant and things. So I think just get it over out there and back <laughs> really quick. If yeah. someone wants to find out about future medical missions with these two groups, what website or who would they contact? I follow MedVenture on Instagram and Travel Nurse Takeover on Instagram. Um, the main group that it is through is it's through the Four North Project, which is the nonprofit organization that is actually located there in the Dominican Republic that they are working through. Okay. Um, and then the other two groups, they went back in the summer and then this is like the second trip they're taking back down there. But the Four North Project is also on Instagram that you can follow. I don't know if they're gonna do sub trips. I would assume so. I don't know when those would be though. Follow along the next week or so as That's we're down perfect. there. Perfect. <laughs> we will, I'll put the links in the notes down below and then people will be able to catch on to that. Now, going back to your traveling, you started, tell us a little bit about how you actually started. I like hearing what actually yeah. convinces people to finally hit the road. I started in the ER as a nurse and loved it, loved it and wanted to kind of focus my career. So I started working in the cath lab uh, on cardiology because like ER, you're doing everything. You're doing geriatrics, pediatrics. Uh, endocrinology, everything. And so I wanted to focus on cardiology. So I had the opportunity to start working in a cath lab and had the opportunity to work like pre and post area, which mm -hmm. isn't necessarily directly in the lab, but it helped me learn the procedure to do, um, how to prep and recover these patients, get to know the doctors. And I worked in that lab for about two years. And um, so then COVID hit. And I got voluntold to go work COVID ER. So I did that for a while and had the opportunity to go work in a different lab out of state. It's actually like the Abbott World Training Center, cath lab. So I was doing like live stream procedures, uh, new valve procedures that are like the first in the world. And it was an amazing learning opportunity. But the town it was in, I really didn't love it. And I wanted to like go and explore the world. It was just me and my dog. You know, I didn't really have anything tying down anywhere. I had done the COVID thing. And so I was kind of considering what to do next. And I got a call from a doctor that had like taught baby cat lab me saying, I need you. I need you here at my new lab. Perfect timing. So I didn't know where I wanted to go. So I was like, okay, I don't know how to start that. And so I just Googled like travel nursing, found a recruiter and they like magically hooked me up. It was like fate that it worked out because this doctor that I didn't had worked with before needed a travel nurse and I was ready and had yes. the experience and was ready to start that step in my career. So I just like matched up, went there and that's how I began. My first company was with Aya Healthcare. They, I guess, had a direct um, contract with this hospital that the doctor that I knew worked at. They just wrote it up and I went there, worked with a doctor that I already knew for a 13-week contract. And they, they wanted me to extend, but like I said, I was traveling to explore the country. And so I was ready to go to California, out of there, see the country. I took off for California, moved across the country, and they canceled my contract, my second, so I'm brand new, three days before I started. So I had moved out there with everything I owned and my dog were on the beach, all my stuff's in storage. Luckily, I didn't sign a lease yet. Right. Or else I would have been really, really hurting. And I didn't have a job. 
I've totally mm-hmm. been there where you've just done the big move across the country and all of a sudden they cancel you and you're like, what? what? Mm-hmm. So what, and I was like, what does this mean? Yeah. So, so I just on the beach for like six weeks and had a great time. It was the winter. I was in California and it was awesome. I loved it. And I just let my recruiter just look and I was like, well, I'm already here. So I may as well take a job in the area. And I just let them keep looking and submitting me in Southern California. And eventually something came up and I just took the next thing that came up and it was hard. It was a really, really hard job. Um, it was in the midst of COVID. And like I said, it was about six weeks after my contract got canceled that I finally got a new job. Six weeks. That's a long time to go, but you were right at that point where they were having to cancel procedures and they had things on hold. So you were just caught in a really unfortunate time. And that's why I was canceled. My contract was canceled because they didn't have the volume to meet me because cath labs weren't functioning except for emergencies. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know and OR, travelers or not. So OR nurses had the same challenge too. You know, a lot of them had to work mm-hmm. either work elsewhere or just take the time off. OR, PACU, they really struggled through that period. But you have ER to fall back on. Do you ever use that? Not as a traveler. I do keep up my licensure. Like I still have PALS, which I've used in cath lab twice in my mind in very general terms, like we practice every day and then do our emergent skills for STEMIs and emergent cases. So it's like we're practicing at this lower pace every day, and then we get to do these ER type situations. So I still get that and that adrenaline. Now, when I think of cath labs, so many times I think of a cardiac cath lab where you're doing your angioplasties and your valves Mm -hmm. and your things like that. But you have mentioned that you do so many more things that are nothing to do with cardiac or beyond the cardiac realm. What other, is it common to do all of it? Or is it in larger cities you do only cardiac and specialize in that? Um, I would say it's actually the opposite. So in smaller cities, you traditionally only do cardiac. Um, they don't necessarily have the staff equipment to do the other things. And then bigger cities, you're doing more things because you have, you know, more doctors, more labs, more options. Um, and I actually was just talking to a new, at this job, I'm, I just finished. Uh, yesterday was my last day. We just got a brand new travel business, his first assignment. And so we were talking and he that he had an opportunity to go somewhere where they do, I think it was peripherals. He had never done it and he was nervous. Same with EP. He didn't want to do an EP job um, because he's a travel nurse and he was worried because he didn't know how to do it. I'm like, this is the perfect opportunity to learn. Like they will teach you. You just have to be transparent with your recruiter and with the managers. Um, So I took a job at a place that did interventional neurology, trauma, IR, interventional radiology. So um, having car accidents, laceration type things, you have peripheral cases. So like leg cases, arm, fistulas, things like that, uh, ports, permacath. So you don't necessarily see that in most labs and just traditional implants like pacemakers. Go a place where I don't know how to do it, where I can't help. I'm like, they will teach you. That's a great opportunity to learn. And then you can go forward with all this knowledge didn't have before. You can learn from these doctors, learn from these coworkers, and just accumulate all of this knowledge from all these different hospitals. Like it's such an opportunity for growth. Uh, I think it's a great tip because sometimes people are so desperate. They are willing to say, yeah, we'll take you without experience in this area and we'll train you. But being transparent about your skills is mm-hmm. key so that everybody knows what to expect when yeah. you come on. Because then they know that they're going to have to precept you for however long, X amount of days. But having that openness and that open mm-hmm. conversation is key. What advice would you give to somebody if they're interested in pursuing interventional radiology? Do you feel like they could just jump into it? Or do you feel like there's a course that you would recommend? Or should they go staff for a brief time and really kind of get some skills underway? What would be, you've done it now, you've gone from ER to rate cath lab. What would you recommend? It's like, I feel there should be um, like a certificate that you can get to learn these things 
because everyone teaches you differently. Each tech you learn teaches you differently. Every doctor does it differently. Why can't there be a streamlined process? So it is very frustrating. Um, it was frustrating for me because I'm very black and white. Just tell me how to do it and I'll do it. And everyone's telling me differently. Luckily for me, I had started as an EMT and then in the ER and then build, I built up those skills. But to give that advice to someone else is hard. You have to be confident to stand and learn from multiple people and then piece together that information. When I first started, the manager told me that a lot of the learning in cath lab is individualized. So you have to be prepared to work in to learn the skills. The biggest thing that I can tell someone is get a preceptor that you are comfortable communicating with and that you can learn from. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable with the person that you're learning from, then it's not going to be a successful situation. Um, if you have skills that you're comfortable with, I think you can absolutely start in the lab and learn. So if you come from a medical background, I don't think you necessarily need to start on the floor. I think you can start in the lab as a new grad. Some people don't say that that's a thing. Um, but if you worked as a tech for four years in on the floor in the ER, there's no reason why you couldn't start learning the cath lab skills. Yeah, being a tech it's is just- is huge for giving you yeah. some solid background because as long as you've seen it, you've seen a trach, you've seen a JP drain, you know, you've seen all these kind of mm-hmm. drains and spots and and whatnot. So that really helps. Um, do you, it might also be a thought that they could consider committing to a longer travel assignment, something like maybe a three month travel assignment or something where they they know they can kind of commit a little bit more time so they feel more confident coming out of it. Yeah, there are a lot of vacational materials online. I think a really great online educational thing is through Medtronic. They have, Cath, I think it's called Cath Lab Academy or something like that through Medtronic. Oh, okay. um, it's not only medical devices. They do have like a lot of pacemaker education that starts extremely basic, but I believe they also have some just general Cath Lab education as well, where you can just get some knowledge. Uh, that's really great. And it was recommended to me when I first, and it gave me a lot of information, but you have to choose to be successful. You have to, to ask questions uh, a lot of times because we're, we're just used to working as a unit. Once you learn what you're doing, you're just doing it together. So uh, finding a good team that's wanting to teach is, is what's successful. And as a traveler, that's really hard because you're taking a travel job, it's because they're, they're struggling. So that's not a, usually a successful educational environment. True. Very true. (laughs) Jessica, what would you say is your least favorite thing about traveling? One of the hardest things is for cath lab is typically I take a lot of call, which I like, Mm -hmm. uh, because it gives the people who work here, a break to actually spend time with their family. They've been on call so much, but that reduces the amount of time that I get to explore the area of the country I'm in, (laughs) which is kind of why I travel here. So that's the only downfall for me. And call would be really tight. You couldn't just say, I'll be there in two hours. It's probably like a 30 minute to one hour window, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, I have to be at the hospital within 30 minutes. Uh, I have Dixie. I tried to be within five to 10 minutes of the hospital because typically I let her out before I go in. I can't go anywhere, do anything. (laughs) And typically, what do you get paid, if you don't mind me asking, when you're on call? What's uh, something for someone to expect? So so typically to sit home and just have the pager, I get between four to $7 an hour, Okay. generally. When I go in, it's a different rate. Okay. It's whatever, whatever the callback time is, is usually the overtime rate. Okay. It's the same. Good. So you could really uh, come out with some extra savings there if you're doing a lot of call. Oh yeah. That, I mean, that I would say is a majority of my time because that's what I'm doing the most of. I get mm-hmm. more, I get almost double or triple my hours just in call time. Mm-hmm. Um, this past assignment was short. It was only six weeks because it was 
they just wanted me for six weeks. I was like, okay, I'll be there. And I had three days off that whole time. So I yeah, worked a lot. A traveler might so want that. Yeah, that's what you're there that's for. That's what I'm here for. Exactly. I want to finish with what do you love most about traveling? I love that it supports my indecisiveness. <laughs> I hate being locked in and making decisions that are long-term. It's funny, I'm covered in tattoos that you can't see, but I hate making decisions that last forever. So right. traveling is so funny because you know, I don't have to commit to a hospital. I don't have to commit to a location. I don't have to commit to a home. <laughs> I can choose something and I can extend it if I want, but yeah. it gives me so much freedom to explore the country and learn. I mean, I've been in the cath lab coming on five years now, and I feel like a baby. I still feel like a baby. I'm in this hungry phase of my career and it just gives me so much freedom to grow and learn and meet so many people. And I can go to conferences all over the country and learn from doctors and other staff and reps. I mean, I've met reps from all these different regions and they all have these stories. I met this guy who was like crimping his own stents and getting access with the doctors. I mean, that's, that's 30, 40 years ago. I mean, that's history. It's amazing yeah. the people that I'm able to meet. And as I mentioned before, doing doing procedures that are the first in the world using stents that are not on the market yet. I mean, it's amazing. It's It's been a great experience for me. I have to ask, uh, I've been in nursing for a while. And right in the beginning, I remember they talked about having gold stents because for those with allergies, they would physically use gold plated stents. And we, we would always joke about how this person's life insurance should be increased because of the value of them. Do you still use gold stents? I think they exist. I've used a gold plated pacemaker because the patient patient had a bunch of allergies. So no. this person, this person came in an emergency and we were going to just put a pacemaker in, right? But she had she had like all these allergies. So we ended up putting a temporary in because the temporary, just the very end touches the muscle. So just the very end would irritate if it was an allergy. And we was testing to get the permanent one made. And the whole thing was ended up being plated because she had allergies. So I had no idea that was possible. Yeah. uh, They will do allergy testing for certain metal things. Most of the stents are drug coated, but the base metal could be gold. I don't know. And that's like the, the they call them drug eluding stents or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Yes. This has been absolutely yeah. fascinating. And I know there's actually a lot of nurses out there who would like to change. And what's nice about the idea of, you know, IR or, car, or cath lab in general is you don't really do as many night shifts. You don't have to do more 12 hour <laughs> shifts. And you can share a call. Usually the, the call is something that they might or might not like. So very interesting and, and yeah. cool. I work Monday through Friday, day shift, usually off by 3.30 to 5, depending on when. And then call. And there are travel contracts that don't include call. There are travel contracts that are just like pre and post and no call. I mean, it exists. You, the beauty of travel is you can take whatever you want. We all slave away at the start of our careers, Jessica. So go for it. Yes. And you can slow down later. Grind it out. <laughs> Have you been to TravCon or heard mm-hmm. of TravCon? I've heard of TravCon. The last one, uh, this past year, I was like, it was my last week at my job. So I wasn't able to make it. You yeah. have to make it next year because you're going to be able to meet all the people that you did your medical mission with, because they're probably going to yes. be at TravCon too. Yeah. A lot of the people that I follow were like there. So I was like, seeing exactly. all their stuff. And it's like, Oh my gosh, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm sure hopefully next year when I see the date, like earlier, I'll give you the date right I'll now. Like- uh, oh, the- you have it. Perfect. Travcon next year is September 18th to the 21st. And it's always in Vegas at the Paris okay. hotel is where we're at right now. And we love that location. It's such a gorgeous hotel okay. to be in. So it's always done on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
because pretty much because the travelers want to be able to go back and work the rest of their week. So they don't actually physically have to take a week off. So we've specifically designed it so they can come in, they can do Monday, Tuesday, or they can add on the Sunday and then they can head back and work the rest of the week. And a lot of travelers also come in early. So they'll come in Thursday or Friday, Saturday before the event. So there's a lot of unofficial events that happen before the conference as well. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to ask if it was in the, in Vegas every year. So that's perfect. Yes. And we do that mostly, I know we're travelers and we should move around, but it's really hard to find a big hall that will handle all of us. Plus cheap rooms. We, we really want cheap hotel rooms because travelers are paying for every part of their, they're paying the flight, their hotel, everything. And it gets expensive and flights are cheap. Yeah, we've really extensively searched other areas and Vegas has just consistently come out ahead with all those different factors and made it just affordable to come. So hope to see you there next That's year. That's great, thank you. Yeah, hopefully we can see each other in person. <laughs> I'm not an Instagram person, Jessica, but um, I, I occasionally tap into my husband. So I will find you on Instagram. And uh, good luck with your mission trip. That sounds just a great opportunity. We have Mercy Ships that shows up at the conference every year they exhibit. And my plan is to go with Mercy Ships at least once to see what it's like and be able to contribute. It would be such an amazing experience. Doing this one and then in February, I'm doing like a three week long, long one in Guatemala with like a hospital I used to work with. So that one's going to be like way more intense. So it's like, I'm dipping my toe in to like what it's like almost. That's great. So, if anybody wants to follow your adventures on Instagram, how do they find you? Um, it's J Nay J A Y Y Y. And my name is actually a uh, J Nay with five Y's and DJ for Dixie Jane. So it's like, cause my name is J Nay. And it turned into like Jane. Like oh, perfect. So it's just like more and more Y's have accumulated, but it's Jane with three Y's is my handle. Perfect. So. I will also put that in the notes so people can find you, follow you in your adventures okay. and uh, best of luck with everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just, I've learned so much over the years. So I figured anything I can pass on the better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's why we did the podcast is to be able to connect people yeah. and, and get them to hear about different areas. You get bored of one, you want to move to the next. So this is a great way to yes. do it. Thanks for listening to Travel Nursing and Allied Life. You can find the full show notes below or at travcon.org. Please help us out by rating our podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.